By the time of the first century, the city of Athens had lost most of its political and economic greatness. In those respects, it was but a faint shadow of what it had been five centuries earlier under the leadership of Pericles. But Athens, Greece was still a very famous location when the Apostle Paul lived. The city was yet highly regarded for its culture, its art, and its learning. There is a city here in the United States that wears the nickname the Athens of the South, and some of you know that I speak of Nashville, Tennessee. Because of its many colleges and universities and churches, Nashville is called the Athens of the South. And one of the many points of interest for those who are touring Nashville is the Parthenon, which is located in Centennial Park. This building is an exact replica of an ancient building that stood in Athens, Greece. When you're in Nashville sometime, go by and visit the Parthenon. See the huge bronze doors, the irregular steps, the giant columns, and the many idols all reminiscent of Greek mythology. The original Parthenon in Athens was a temple erected to the Greek goddess after whom the city had been named, Athena. The building was located on a hill called the Acropolis. Well, just a stone's throw away from the Acropolis in Athens was another hill. This one was named the Areopagus after the Greek god of war, Ares. Translated, it's called Mars Hill after the Roman god of war, Mars. Well, from day to day in the first century A.D., the men of Athens would assemble on Mars Hill and would listen to orators and lecturers and philosophers. And it was on this famous location that the Apostle Paul enjoyed a very unique privilege one day. As we read in the book of Acts chapter 17, beginning with the 16th verse, we find that Paul was in Athens waiting for the arrival of some of his fellow workers. The Bible says that his spirit was stirred within him when he saw the city was wholly given over to idolatry. And he spent several days disputing with interested persons in the synagogue and in the marketplace. Then one day this opportunity came. The Athenians took him to Mars Hill and granted him permission to speak. And Paul had attracted the attention of the Epicurean and Stoic philosophers through his talk of Jesus and the resurrection. Well, beginning with the 22nd verse of Acts chapter 17, we have recorded one of the famous New Testament sermons, and that is Paul's sermon on Mars Hill. The Bible says, Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things ye are too superstitious. For as I passed by, and behold your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God. Whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, him declare I unto you. God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worshipped with man's hands, as though he needed anything, seeth, or seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things, and hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth, and hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation, that they should seek the Lord, if haply they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As certain also of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. Forasmuch then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone, graven by art and man's device. And the times of this ignorance God winked at, But now commandeth all men everywhere to repent, because he hath appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness, by that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men, in that he hath raised him from the dead. The Bible then tells us that when those Greeks heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked, and others said, We will hear thee again of this matter. 
And there are still others who, according to the Bible, clave unto him and, and believed what he had to say. So it is with people today when they hear the truth. Some mock, some remain undecided and uncommitted, and some believe. Friends, we thank you for joining us for our program today, and we encourage you to join us each day this week as we study this great sermon from the Apostle Paul. May God bless you with a wonderful day.